So I do want to thank the customer that came by. Actually, it was a YouTube follower. Came by. I was away on vacation. He, George was running the shop. He became a customer. He bought a battery tie. Oh, yeah. So thank you so much. We just enjoyed some delicious Buffalo Wild Wings. So that was lunch solution for today. Thank you. And my fault completely me for not forgetting your name. Or for, for forgetting your name. Blame this guy. I'm the worst. I, I remember your name. I just didn't meet you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we have a titanium muffler here. This is from a GT3. And apparently this is a common problem with the Porsche GT3 exhaust. I don't know if it's something with the sound wave, but apparently it's thin across here. This is a notorious place to crack. Now it is titanium, which is a little bit more tricky. Not a lot of people have experienced welding titanium. There is some tricks and techniques that you gotta use when welding this stuff. Well, as you see close in here, you see we've got multiple cracks but different directions. Well, this is almost like grain in the metal. This will continue to crack, kind of like a windshield. It's like this will just wander and find its own path. It'll find the weak spot in the metal. Well, one of the tricks on here is to find the end of the crack and drill a small hole. That basically dissipates that from taking off in a direction. So we're gonna, I mean, it's pretty clear, that one right there. Now this one, there's multiple cracks. This is what I showed you a second ago. You see there's one going this way. Well, you can catch it with your nail. We'll we'll, we'll, you, sometimes when you heat this up, you can see. But we'll drill the hole here, put some heat in it, and that might be just a fracture on the top. But if not, got to drill a hole at the end. And then we will bring this back into shape here, put some tacks and check it, back purge it, and then weld it, see how it looks. This almost looks like make, doesn't it? Yeah. So for someone to take that all the way down there, Either they had a couple of birthdays halfway through that weld, or they did it with a make machine. But I'm not sure uh, who makes this. I don't know if it's Porsche themselves. Flip this over, let's see if there's any names on it. I don't think there are see anything. Yeah. Who knows, they don't see a name on it. Maybe it's Porsche, or maybe one of the factories that Porsche use. But if you guys are familiar with this, if you're in the Porsche world, apparently this is somewhat common. It's made in Germany. All right. That's the company, Germany, or is that the uh, country? So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at this. We'll drill a couple of holes like we're talking about. You don't need a massive hole. You need, obviously, something just to stop that crack wandering. <laughs> All right, so we've got this clamped in position, drilled our holes there. Uh, we're gonna heat this one over here to see where the other crack is. Once you get some heat in it, it really shows what it's doing, the direction it's going. We need to clean this metal a little bit more. We'll tack it, double check it again, then we can start welding it. All right, so we've got a few tacks in here holding it together. Everything looks good. So we can go ahead and weld that. We'll be in good shape. All right, so this is done. It welded really nice. This is a really good quality titanium, which is uh, obviously makes a world of difference too, but everything is nice. The weld is good. There's no other cracks after heating it. We didn't see any spider cracks disappearing, so this should be good to go. As I mentioned to the customer, if this is something that's a, a continuation, if it keeps doing this, what we would do is, unless there is a, I don't think there's anything that gets in here, it's probably uh, part of the muffler on the inside. But what we can do is just basically put a plate across here, kind of a patch, bring it up to this high side here and roll it around here, make this just reinforce, put some 16 gauge uh, sheet on there. But we'll see, we'll report back if this is something that cracks. Uh, we'll let you know if you have a Porsche muffler, if you're looking at doing this, let us know. We have a lot of experience with titanium and we can take care of it for you. Be safe, thank you so much. All right, so I am editing this as we speak. And this customer, thank you again for, I mean, everything. I'll go over that here in a minute. Stay tuned, there's a little bit more coming. He came with this car right here. This is his other car. He's gonna bring this by, and we're gonna do a little bit of work on this. This is a super clean prelude with a Gretti turbo kit. This is fantastic. He's gonna bring this by. We're gonna remake the downpipe and maybe a couple of other little tweaks. So stay tuned on that. and. 
again thank you so much for that little bonus so this beautiful ap1 s2000 is a past customer he's actually had a few cars done by us this was a car that came in when i was on vacation when george did that week well it came in for maintenance it's back because we ordered some parts for it so the control knobs are pretty bad let me turn off the beep beep beep, beep. just some people don't like to listen to it they're in pretty bad shape and it's something that's pretty common you see they've almost got like a rubber coating and it cracks well this gets so bad that this falls off and that little white little line in there that's the base material the light shows through this but this is like a rubber coating on there and when this pops off it's white and it looks it looks even worse when it falls apart well we ordered the the ac control knobs these two knobs at the same part number and we're doing a torque angle sensor too which i'll show you here in a minute another common problem with s2000s actually 38 it bought it at 34. i actually helped him set this deal up i'll talk about that another time but these really easy don't go crazy don't put a screwdriver behind it don't grab them with pliers these just hold them firmly and they should come right out for you unfortunately these knobs are kind of sticky but just pull them forward don't bend them they've got like a clip on there but don't pull them to a side in case you damage them pull them straight out all right so this is the part number and again same knob for the temperature and the selector super duper easy so it's pretty self-explanatory but i'm just going to show you there is like a d-shape in there same as on the shaft that it pushes onto don't put it on there crook it and then start forcing it and break it you want to break the new knob that you just purchased but just line that flat up with that right there as you see it pretty easy but again i'm just going to mention it because somebody might be in a rush put it on there and kind of twist it until you feel it line up and then just it just slides on look at that again one of those little things that just makes the car feel a little bit newer it just looks fresher i mean these just you know get damaged in the sun it's just part of owning a car this is a 20 year old car so just little things like that same with a shift knob over time this wears and it starts to get ratty this one's still in really good shape but it's little things like that that make you feel you know like the car's still new all right so this is the torque angle sensor basically it sits between your steering and the rack and pinion as they would say so this is a sensor in here as you turn this right here it is telling the sensor what you're doing and it helps make decisions on whether it should assist it or tighten up the steering and so on it also knows the angle that it's at for the vsa system this is what usually goes bad so i figured i'd use an s2000 steering wheel just to demonstrate it and make it as authentic as possible so this is the steering angle sensor, the torque sensor, the angle sensor, whatever it's called. One of the telltale signs that it's going bad is it usually happens in the morning and when it's cold, you start the car and it will feel like it turns one way easy and then it feels like you lose power steering and then all of a sudden it'll go again. And this will often get better as the day goes on. Maybe after the first minute, it'll feel like it's fine. But I've also seen these where they actually take off on their own and go all the way to the left and then when you touch the steering wheel it feels like it's locked up and then it'll free itself and you basically go what the heck was that and they won't do it again for a few days two scenarios usually it's the torque angle sensor steering angle sensor you like the way i'll say torque it sounds like i'm talking it's my stupid accent so <laughs> the other potential is the Power steering control box is mounted right near the battery. It's that gold box. It has the four bolts holding down the big plugs. Brand new, it's something ridiculous like 400 bucks. Every junkyard has them. They're about 50 to 60 bucks. Uh, one junkyard I know will help you out with that is TAE over in Plant City. Check those guys out. I know they have plenty. Um, that's one of the first things I would change because it's cheap. When you're fixing a problem, always, if you're going to throw parts at something, throw cheap parts at it first, and then if it doesn't work, it's not that big of a deal. If it fixes it, great. If not, you're not out as much. So I would check that power steering control box first. Change that, drive it, do one of these numbers, hope that you fixed it. If not, you're going to have to do the angle sensor. But again, hopefully my demonstration helped because I did use an actual S2000 wheel and that's how you get a real good feel of the of just being silly so 
we're starting to see a lot of those little issues now the cars are you know 15 20 years old this is just happens with any car it's not like well this has problems the all do it plastics materials everything breaks down we're starting to see all this stuff and as we find things we're going to kind of share it with you tell you what to look for how to fix it in the future it's one of those back of the mind back pot type thing i might do some kind of buying assistance with s2000s because we have a pretty good pretty good feel of the market i have a handful of dealerships that call me and say hey we have the best s2000 ever you gotta sell it to your customers and unless i actually put my eyes on it i can't really take somebody else's word for it because one man's mint s2000 is another man's uh, it's okay so that might be something look for the future it's still kind of long ways out i might either either get involved in helping locate cars putting them to the buyers or if i can get with someone with some money and some backing maybe i can actually buy s2000s uh prep them get them ready for sale i don't know that's something i used to sell cars way back in the day problem is i tend to be picky i buy a car for fifteen thousand dollars put five thousand dollars into it to make it absolutely perfect and then you can't get your 20 grand out of it and then you're no longer a car salesman you're just a a reconditioner but that might be something in the future so hopefully that helped if it did give us a big fair thumbs up and a subscribe and we'll see you on the next video thanks for watching